and uh, let's see how well that does for a real equation. So going to MATLAB, uh, let me close this. I think it's uh, making my computer hot. So going to MATLAB, uh, let's again make a uniform grid. So let's choose n, for example, what n do you want to use? Okay, okay, simple. And uh, I want x to be link space of 0, 1, n plus 1. So these are my interfacial grid points. And I'm not going to store the value of the function at the grid points, right? So what I'm doing is I want my dx to be x2 to n minus x1 to n minus 1. So this is my delta xi's. And uh, notice that I have dx is a uh, 1 by 10 array. So I have 10. I have n. Uh, delta i's and I would have also n ui's. So u would be equal to, uh, let's see what initial condition we want to use. Let's make a sinusoidal function. All right. So if we make a sinusoidal function, then my u's, uh, if, if, let's say, if my u, so let me give an example. If my u is equal to sine of, uh, let me do 2 pi x, then my ui is going to be 1 over delta xi times integral of xi minus half, xi plus half of sine of 2 pi x dx. That is, if you uh, do the integration, the sine becomes a cosine, and I need a factor of 2 pi, so 1 over 2 pi delta xi of cosine of xi minus half minus cosine of xi plus half, right? Did I make any mistake here? Oh, yeah, 2 pi, yeah. 2 pi, thank you. All right, so that's what we are going to do. So u int is integral of u is going to be, let's see, uh, 1 divided by 2 pi uh, d -d 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 2 pi, let's don't factor in the delta x at this point, times cosine 2 pi x. Right, so that's the integral of my. Uh, actually, it should be minus. That's my integral of u, and u would be equal to u int from two to n minus u int one to n minus one divided by dx. So that should be my proper uh, cell average. So if we plot it. Uh, Let's make plotting a little bit easier. I actually don't know how to do that. Uh, so, so I think it's x1 to n minus 1 and uh, x2 to n. So is that, let's try if that works. Uh, so we're making a row and another row and we want to do u and u. So let's see if that's the proper orientation. Yeah, oh, that's right. Okay, so we are basically plotting uh, plotting this function as if it is a piecewise constant function, right? Because we actually don't really know what happens in, in between uh, in between them. Okay, so that's my sinusoidal function. That's what I approximate in the computer. Okay, so what we want to do next is let's make a function so that we can use uh, OD45, make a function of DDT uh, finite volume. My input is going to be T and uh, U, right? And my output is DU DT. So uh, let's pass in a few things. 
T and U and uh, let's also what do, what else do we need to pass in? Yeah, I don't think we need to pass in anything. So let's recompute uh, some of the stuff over here. So uh, we want our n to be the, the length of u. So we know that that's the number of intervals, right? And uh, let's actually redo our re recompute our delta x here, so that we don't have to. I don't like passing global variables if possible. So I have the dx now, and uh, now according to according to our finite volume scheme, right? We need to do one and two. In order to plug in this equation, we need this flux reconstruction. So let's reconstruct f. And uh, because here I have a uniform uh, volumes, my a and b are both equal to half, right? So um, let's try this scheme first, and uh, my my uh, so I want to compute f. F is going to be, for example, if we perform Berger, if we solve Burger's equation, would be would be u squared over two, right? And if you solve a different equation, you only need to change if you solve a different equation, right? I mean, for different equations, only f is going to be different. Anything else is going to be the same, and then. I want to calculate my f interface. My f interface is what I really need, right? Because I need f at the half points. So f interface is going to be f1 to n minus 1 plus f2 to n divided by 2 for uniform grid. If non uniform, you just need to weigh them according to the size of the x. Okay? Now f int is going to be an array of length what? So if u is of length n, right, n is the length of u, f should be the same length as u, right? Because I'm computing, I'm evaluating the flux function on the <laughs> cell averaged values. So f is like the uh, they call the, the the volume fluxes, which doesn't, it's not really a flux. Basically, the flux function evaluated at the volume averages. And f interface is really the approximation of the flux at the cell interfaces. Right now, it only has a length of n minus 1. Right? So, in order for us to apply finite volume scheme, we need, we need f at how many points? Hmm? And plus one points. So we need boundary conditions on both sides for f. Uh, I'm going to talk about boundary conditions a little bit later. But right now, let's suppose our boundary condition is zero flux boundary condition. So that's, that's one of the boundary conditions you can always apply to a conservation law. So flux is equal to zero. Is a, always a proper boundary condition you can you can apply so f int would be equal to 0 f int 0 so I'm adding two zeros on both sides um, let's see if I need uh, uh, a column later on so my DUDT would be equal to what would be equal to f int on the left minus f int on the right divided by dx. I think I need a parenthesis over here. Right? That completes my finite volume discretization because the last equation is just uh, this equation. DDT of u is equal to f on the left minus f on the right. All right? So that's all I need to program uh, for a finite volume scheme to solve the Burgers equation if we use the central flux approximation. Uh, you only need to change this line if you use a different flux reconstruction scheme. Right? Okay, we're going to see the central flux reconstruction scheme doesn't really work for all the cases.
and we need more sophisticated flux reconstruction schemes, um, especially for strong shocks.